Hey everyone, it's Kong, back with a little bit of a different video for you today. Great timing for it, actually, since this week's banners are reruns, and we've got a brand new major update coming next week with some new mechanics and a new mode to help us improve our characters. Just on the tail end of getting over an illness here, so apologies if I still sound a little bit stuffed up. I'll try my best to talk through it. The in-game news item for Langrisser Day 44 explains the new system in some detail, but I thought I'd talk through the details to hopefully provide some more clarity. So let's talk about casting patterns. Casting patterns are meant to evoke delicate and powerful inscriptions etched onto our character's equipment, reminiscent of the magical enchantments woven into Valyrian steel during the forging process. So first, WTF are casting patterns, actually. After this major update, for players who reach account level 55 or higher, there will be a new interface in the equipment menu of the hero screen. These are little nodes that you have to level up, and they give you straight stat boosts the higher you level them. So they're not RNG enchant rolls like the ancient beckoning stones you use in the class menu. These are more like training grounds or anarchy nodes that you level up by spending gathered materials. More on that in a bit. As you can see here, most characters with maxed out CP nodes will end up with an additional 500 hit points, 75 to their main attacking stat, whether that's attack or int, 15 to their non-attacking stat, 45 to defense and magic defense, and 10 skill. Characters like Clotaire who use both attacking stats get a slightly different spread, but tanks get the standard spread. One of the interesting things about this system is that it's on a character-by-character -character basis, and you have to grind for it. So not everyone's characters are going to be jacked right away. There will probably be some popular characters to build up first for Apex, but I can definitely see some players working on surprising or niche units, depending on their own playstyles. Okay, so let's talk about materials next. Much like Anarchy training, the materials to upgrade your casting patterns come in R, SR, and SSR rarity. I'll talk about how to get them in a minute. Each node can be leveled up five times, with the cost increasing for each level. Some characters have more nodes than others. For example, you can see Ultimuler has a little extra weapon node. But don't worry, the system accounts for this. Every character costs the same number of mats to fully max out. Now, to fully max every stat node on a given character, it'll cost you 825 R tier materials, 540 SR tier materials, and 300 SSR tier materials. Big number totals are kind of misleading, though, because the materials are actually divided into types based on the equipment node you're upgrading. For a clearer look at what that means, let's talk about how to actually acquire these. Okay, so there are three main ways to get CP materials. One is obviously by spending money. Zilong is definitely going to be selling CP bundles in the shop, but it costs something like $300 to max out one character from scratch. With so many characters to upgrade, I can't see this being worth it for anyone but the most interstellar space whales. The second way is going to be through events. Much like training boxes, we'll be able to get bundles of CP mats through the monthly Secret Realm events and probably some login events. Easy. The final way to get them is the good old-fashioned way, grinding like crazy. There's a whole suite of new stages that rotate each day of the week, and they cost 20 stamina each, and you can't do them in co-op to shave off some of that cost. I do want to go into some detail here because there are some rules to be aware of, but first, the schedule. Monday's stages will drop materials for swords and daggers. Tuesday's stages drop materials for heavy and light headgear. So light headgear, that's like the stuff that aquatic or flyers use. Wednesday's stages drop materials for hammers, bows, and axes. Thursday's stages drop materials for light armor and cloth armor, so that's robes and such. Friday's stages drop materials for spears and staves. Saturday's stages drop materials for heavy armor and cloth hats, so mage hats. And on Sunday, all the stages are open. Now, you'll notice you didn't hear me mention accessories. Materials for accessories can drop randomly from any of the stages, but their drop rate is rare to compensate for this. This means you're going to want to be strategic and focus your grinding on certain days. But wait, why be strategic? Why not just throw stamina at this till everything is maxed? 
well, there's a weekly grind limit. You can only run these stages in any combination a maximum of 99 times per week. Fortunately, you are allowed to sweep them, so all those sweep tickets you've been hoarding will come in handy. Each day, you get two free bonus runs that give bonus materials and don't count against the 99 run cap. You can see up here, this weekly cap doesn't decrease yet. After we do an off daily sweep with no bonus rewards, then it costs us one of our 99 runs. Now you can also see that the symbols for each material type are not very intuitive, so the look of them is just going to have to be something we gradually get used to. You can kind of tell them apart by the color of the tiny engraving in the middle of the rune. The blue ones here are for helms, and the yellow ones are for accessories. The accessory stones are the ones you're going to have to be careful about spending because of the low drop rate. Anyway, this is all going to take some planning, and I suspect some of us are going to have a new tab in our spreadsheet soon. But honestly, it's best just to think of this as another background anarchy grind, and just let it happen over time. Now there's one more thing I want to talk about, and that's those middle question mark nodes. Each character is getting a new CP passive, but they're not all rolling out at the same time. Instead, they're being introduced gradually, kind of like unique equipment and three-cost skills. As you can see from this picture of the Knight of Mystery, her middle node isn't a question mark. That's because she actually has one of the new CP passive skills. These skills are unique for each character, and they usually try to synergize with some element of their existing kit. In order to unlock these central nodes, you need 12 core materials. You'll be able to get three per week from Timeless Trials, and they're going to be available in monthly events after a while as well. Obviously, we're looking at around four weeks to grab the passive for a single character, so choose carefully. I'm not going to list all the ones that are available in China already, because there are quite a lot of them, and it's not exactly the purpose of this video. But just to give you an idea of what kinds of bonuses we're talking about, Rachel's gives her plus 10% int, and afflicts the enemy with three of her talent stacks when she attacks. Landius gets immunity to generic passive disable, not unique ones like Waytham's talent, and plus 3% defense for each ally within three blocks up to a maximum of 12%. Bozel gets plus 5% defense and magic defense, and a further 10% if he's fighting against someone with two or more debuffs. Kuwabara is actually getting a CP passive as well, which means crossover units are not off the table for these upgrades. That's very interesting news indeed. There are also CP passives for Renata, Elusha, Claret, Lambda, Lanford, Vargas, Almeida, Suzette, Emilia, Brenda, Gerald and Layla, Egbert, Shelfaniel, Young Jessica, and Silverwolf, with more coming in each update. Now, a lot of the passives will suck. As with your normal CP farming, you'll be able to prioritize your cores for the units you actually use the most. Huge thanks to True Hero for providing the screenshots and a bunch of the inside info from China for this video. Hopefully this video helped clarify some of the info around this new mechanic and the new game mode, and maybe helped you work out a strategy for how you're going to approach the grind. You may have heard a lot of the endgame players in the know have been saving up their burgers and salads for the past few months, and this is exactly why. This mode is going to be a stamina sink for a while. If you have any questions about this new mode, or about how the CP upgrades work, definitely feel free to leave a comment under this video. You know I love to reply to comments, so hopefully I'll be able to help you all out there, or someone will be able to chime in anyway. Looking forward to some exciting new changes in the world of Langrisser, and we're not even up to the 4.0 anniversary update yet. So, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for new episodes of Should You Summon rolling out on their regular schedule now, and I'll catch you in the next one. Happy Langrissing, everyone.